Now let's have a look at multiplexing here and see exactly what's going on, what's getting plexed, if you will, and why it's happening multiple times. Well, the multiple part really comes in here at the beginning because the first question when we look at a situation like this where host A at 10.1.1.1 is sending three separate flows of data to server A. And at least one of these protocols should be familiar to you, but if they're not, that's okay. Don't worry about it for right now. It's just that we want to recognize that we have three separate flows of traffic. But the server has to have a way to keep those flows separate or recognize them as they come in because the server, in this case, has got to look at TFTP. It's a trivial file transfer protocol, file transfer protocol, obviously. And what happens is when that, flow, when that flow comes in, the server A has to say, okay, I want to send that to my TFTP application. When another flow, when data for another protocol comes in, it has to be able to look at the, some value and say, okay, this is HTTP traffic. I know how to handle that. And that's where well-known port numbers come in. Now, well-known, of course, that's a pretty relative term, and they may not be well-known to you yet, and you're not expected to memorize all of the hundreds that exist, but our network devices know all of them, from the common to the obscure. And the three protocols that were mentioned in that previous screen each have a well-known port number of their own. TFTP always runs on UDP port 69. HTTP always runs on TCP port 80. SMTP always runs on TCP port 25. Why? Why are these assignments made? Because when a server receives data, and in this particular situation, the destination IP address for all of this data is 10112. It's all coming into that server. Well, that doesn't help the server. It's got to have a way to know, okay, which data is TFTP, which data is HTTP. And what it does, it looks at the port number. The destination port number is how the server keeps this, these data flows separate. So when data comes in on UDP port 69, the server always knows, okay, that's TFTP data. I know how to handle it. Data, if something comes in on TCP port 25, server knows SMTP. It knows exactly how to handle it. And that's where the port numbers come in. It also makes multiplexing possible. Because it would not be very efficient if host A had to announce to server A, okay, I am now sending a flow of SMTP traffic and that's it. And then it just sent SMTP traffic while buffering this other traffic that it could also be sending at the same time, but it couldn't if we didn't have port numbers. But with the port numbers, that makes multiplexing possible. And multiplexing is just a fancy way of saying we're allowing the mixing of traffic during transmission. So, you know, we can mix SMTP traffic with TFTP traffic, which we can mix with HTTP traffic and so forth, because the mixing of it doesn't matter because when the server gets it, it can look at those port numbers and say, okay, you know, I know what's going on. Here's data coming in on this port. It goes to that application coming in on TCP port 80. It goes to that application and so forth. So multiplexing is really just a fancy way of saying we're allowing mixing of traffic. Multiplexing does sound a lot better though, I must admit. Now, with this term socket, I don't hear this as often as I used to, but it's still around, and it sounds like something physical. You know, the first time you hear it, it's like, well, the socket we used was, and you know, you tend to think of a socket wrench if you're not familiar with the logical socket. And all this is, it's a combination of IP address and port number. And for example, the socket for TFTP on our server at 10.1.1.2 is 10.1.1.2.69. Occasionally, you will see a socket expressed with three values, the IP address followed by the transport, excuse me, the transport protocol followed by the port number. So in that case, the TFTP socket would be 10.1.1.2, UDP, 69. So that's kind of an odd value, that last one, if you don't know what's going on or what a socket is, but you do, so you'll know exactly how to read that the next time you see it. I got another handshake for you with TCP. Oh no, not another handshake. I just got the three-way handshake now. Now he's, now he's hit me with a four-way handshake. Well, I'm, I'm giving you this. I don't know if it will come up on your exam, but I want you to know if someone's talking about a four-way handshake, they're not just adding something to the three-way handshake that we talked about earlier. This happens at the end of a TCP-based communication. Because just as we have that underlying connection, you know, after the three-way handshake, there's been an agreement. Well, what happens here, once the segments have all been sent, it's like, okay, we don't want the overhead of keeping up that little control conversation. So we're now going to have an orderly termination of the communication. 
and the fin bit is involved here. Now it wasn't involved in the three-way shake, but it's at the core of this operation, and it's very simple. Basically, you have fin ack, ack, fin ack, ack. And I know I put the third one as ack fin, really doesn't matter. But what you've got again, the originator of the conversation sends over a fin ack. And basically it's saying, hey, okay, you know, it's time to tear this baby down. The server will acknowledge that and then sends an ack fin of its own. And then host A would act that. I told you it was orderly. So it's a very polite teardown of the conversation. But again, each device will send a fin act and an act during this teardown, the four-way handshake at the end of the TCP communication. And then that's that. And of course, I will throw this in, even though I know you know this, UDP doesn't have this because, of course, UDP also doesn't have a fin bit. So we couldn't even begin to do this. Coming up next, before we move to routing, we're going to talk about a couple of well-known port numbers that you should know for your exam, a little bit about what they do, and then we'll move on to do some routing.